Hey guys, it's Austin. Welcome to your 7th Roblox Lua GUI scripting tutorial. And today I'm going to show you guys how to make an intro GUI for your game. I feel like this is something that a lot of you would probably want to do yourself instead of downloading some plugin on Roblox Forward or using a free model just because it should be unique to you or your group or whatever. So without further ado, let's get started. Now there are one of two ways that we can uh, start this, but we gotta decide how we're gonna clone it to the player when they join. We can either use a server script in here and a player added uh, event. Player. Okay. Um, or we can clone it directly from replicated first. And if you guys don't know what replicated first is, it's pretty much what gets cloned to the player when they first join before anything else. So how we can do this is I'm just gonna use the replicated first way because we can remove the Roblox loading screen this way and replace it with yours. So how we can do this is with a local script because replicated first is local. You see it has all these GUI elements here all kinds of local stuff. So we have a local script, let's name it uh, clone intro. Uh, so before we do anything else we have to make it. Um, I'll type this code out beforehand though. Uh, script parent remove default loading screen. That's the method to remove Roblox's default loading screen. So, uh, let's see, script.intro GUI clone parent equals player dot player GUI. Um, well, player equals game dot players local because we have to define player. Um, but yeah, we don't have that intro GUI yet, so let's make it. I'm gonna set up my screen to how I make GUIs here. You guys can set it up however you want, or just leave it how it is. It does not matter. Intro GUI. So, um, let's start out by making a frame. Do 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 do, and we'll call it. <coughs> main. Set the size to 100% uh, across, 100% down. And what I'm going to do is make a screen that'll fade uh, a group logo in, and then fade it back out again, and then fade out the whole uh, cover. So actually I'll name this cover because it's covering the player's screen. I'll make it black. Mm. I like the shade of black, but we'll just go with this. Color3.new000. So, I'm gonna get my group logo here with an image label. This, this size to 3% uh, across, or 30% across, 30% down. And, uh, 35% down. Okay, that's good. Gotta make it look nice and even, not distorted. Try to get it in the middle of the screen. It's probably not perfect, but that's about exactly what I want. So, to add our or my logo here, we're going to use the image property of these. And if you guys need to brush up on properties of images, I covered that in a previous tutorial, I think. So, uh, we have Roblox asset ID colon slash slash and then some numbers. Uh, what these numbers are are the image of a decal on Roblox. And I'm gonna go on the website. I have 
my decal here from my inventory we have to go up to this ID and subtract one from the last number to get the image and now it says Roblox image instead of Roblox decal so this is the asset ID we need uh, highlight it copy it paste it here and now it says Nightmare Studios right here my group logo okay uh, yeah that's a little bit more even so now that I have my logo in the middle ish of my screen um, I'm gonna make it go make this go negative uh, set its position to negative one and what that's gonna do is put it all the way up here off the screen where we can't see it I'm gonna insert local script because uh, it's off the screen but we want the player to see it so hmm to be honest let's move this back because if we have the loading screen like everything up off the screen then it defeats the purpose of loading screen because then they'll see whatever's wherever they spawn in game before this actually tweens down like I'm gonna make it do so that was a derp on my part hmm. we could have another uh, for instance white cover here or purple or red or whatever with the logo in it uh, a frame to tween down and bounce and hit the bottom all fancy like but I think I'm just gonna make logo tween down uh, its position okay one sec I'm gonna insert local script okay we want to tween to this position we're gonna make this go up to negative one all the way up there off the screen <coughs> go into our local script so uh, our intro is cloned into the player GUI let's wait five seconds and then, uh, one sec, I'll define logo here. Local logo equals, yeah, we don't have to do that. Script.parent, wait for child cover, wait for child logo, tween position, udim to dot new. Um, Let's look at the position here 0 0.370 0, 0 0.20 because that's where it was before that's where we want it and if you guys don't know how to tween I made a previous GUI tutorial on that so you guys should go back and view that um, in bounce make it go for one second okay let's how this goes. Test server. Do, 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 do. Oh no, it didn't work. Player GUI is not a valid member of player. And this is the beauty of Wait for Child, guys. Um, player. wait for child because uh, even the stuff even this local script clone intro uh, will clone to the player like probably before the player GUI um, so yeah that's why we couldn't access it just now let's go back test server <coughs> always use wait for child we have the screen waiting 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 and here's our logo boom hmm. so that was a little flat let's try the out uh, direction of this style because I like that better to be honest when I'm tweeting with bounce 
because it'll come down and it'll bounce instead of bouncing while it's up top. Um, okay, I saw some gray up there when I was tweeting. I'll go background transparency to one. Um, border size pixel to zero, even though it actually won't show with background transparency of one. Um, let's use for loop now. Um, we'll fade out the entire cover for I. Uh, we'll wait another few seconds actually before doing that. For I equals uh, one. Uh, yes, yeah, starting point of zero actually. Ending of one, increment of point one. Do uh, wait script dot parent dot cover dot background transparency equals script dot parent dot cover dot background tra uh, transparency plus point one. So if you guys don't know how to use loops, again you gotta go over one of my previous tutorials because I know I covered loops in my other uh, scripting series. So what this does is uh, it starts at zero, it iterates in um, iterations or in increments of 0.1 until it's iterated up to one times. So let's do some math. One divided by 0.1, it's gonna iterate 10 times until it stops and in each iteration it's going to wait uh, like 30th of a second or whatever and then add 0.1 to our covers background transparency it's currently at 0 and um, it's gonna go up to 1 let's test do, 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 do. <clears throat> do, 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 do. two three there we go that worked like a charm but now uh, we don't want that logo to stay on the screen so after that for loop has ran we will uh, wait another second script dot parent destroy it'll destroy the whole screen GUI uh, but this local script will still be in um, the player's player GUI. Hmm. Yeah, we don't want to destroy it because actually, we'll disable this. Uh, equals player to player GUI. Local GUI equals. Uh, I'll tell you why I'm doing this in a second, guys dot parent equals player dot player GUI uh, p dot local script dot disabled equals false. Okay. So uh, the reason I did that is so we could run destroy on script dot parent dot parent and just remove this whole local script from player's player GUI after it's done running just to clear up a little bit more space in there because I'm picky about that kind of stuff uh, and the reason I made it start out as disabled and then change that later is because even in replicated first if this wasn't disabled I'm pretty sure all this code would still run um, yeah I don't know if it did error or not because it's not in player GUI or starter GUI but me just to clear up a little more space test this one final time do 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 waiting 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 boom fade out wait a second destroy it lets the logo linger a second on the player's screen so that's just a basic introduction GUI for your guys' groups or profiles. 
or whoever made your games. Uh, you can make it tween in from the side or just start out as a black or yeah you can make the logo tween in from the side or have another cover different color cover tween in like I said <clears throat> uh, this is a pretty broad creative venue you guys can do a lot of cool things with this I know one of the coolest introduction GUIs I've ever seen was one by build into games in his uh, guest quest online game it started out with his logo in the middle his group logo and then it shot out frames uh, like rainbow colored different colored frames for like 20 seconds straight it kept spinning and shooting them out it was pretty cool it took a lot of math though he open sourced that game and I looked at the code it was pretty cool uh, so yeah that's it for today guys please uh, leave a thumbs up post in the comments what kind of video you guys want to see next that'd be really helpful so I know what kind of content I should bring you guys I'll see you guys later